I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzyk, and today I'm joined by a project engineer, Ben Searing. Ben, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And project engineer, but more specifically, it revolves around reloading tools and kind of more specifically, reloading dyes. Yes, sir. And you, uh, you're our, guy, our dye guru, if you will. And many of our listeners have probably called in and talked to you if they've gone the route of custom-made dyes. They have. I hear it all the time that they've heard my voice and it sounds familiar. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, before we dive into today's topic, um, it's still April uh, and I want to get this just a little bit of housekeeping out there for the listener, for the viewer. Right now, we're running a promotion on snapsafe.com. Use promo code 24VAULTDOOR and that'll get you 5% off any of our vault doors, the standard or the premium grade. And that will also get you a free in-wall safe, almost a $300 value just in the free in-wall safe alone. Again, that's the month of April here in 2024. Uh, Jump on there, check that out, get yourself a vault door. You can really turn any room into your gun safe or into your vault for new construction or old construction. Check out those vault doors. So moving forward, today's topic. This is uh, something that I answered a lot when I was in tech. And Ben, I know you've answered a lot of these questions as well, where somebody gets your extension for custom dies and they call in and just ask. And that is, we've got reloading dies. We've got custom grade. Yes, sir. We've got match grade. Mm -hmm. And we've got custom. And custom could be a custom grade or a match grade. And there's just some confusion on what feature sets are available in the dies, you know, the different die lines. Sure. So, you know, one easy way to look at it, the way I generally explained it is kind of a good, better, best scenario where you're going to have really good quality set, uh, going to work for the majority of your applications, going to be really affordable. Uh, and then you've got step up from there where you get into the match grade set and then you get into the full on custom set. So uh, before we start talking about those, one other question that we got, or I used to get when, in, when I was in tech was, I didn't know Hornady made reloading equipment, which is weird to me because growing up, I knew Hornady as reloading equipment and, and projectiles that we reloaded. Uh, we really didn't shoot their factory ammunition, at least early on. Right. Well, and the factory ammunition wasn't necessarily Hornady named originally. It was the old frontier stuff. Sure. Um, so if that's, I guess, in the, in the history of the company. The ammunition, Hornady ammunition line is probably more of a new, newer development in the history of the 75 years. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, for the listener out there, we do make reloading equipment. We make everything that you could really ever need from the smallest chamfer deburr tool to a fully progressive press and everything in the middle when we really got all those bases covered. Yes. So Hornady got into the reloading business back in 1971. Uh, they purchased the Pacific Reloading Company. Now Pacific is one of, if not the oldest companies uh, that made reloading equipment. And they popularized the C-style press back in 1928. Uh, my father actually still has one. Uh, I'm not sure how old his is. Uh, I've reloaded on it. Um, and that morphed over the years into the O-style press which is what you see now with our Lock and Load Classic and several other brands on the market. And that O-style press really hasn't been changed in 50, 60, 70 years, right. which is pretty remarkable. So Joyce Hornady made bullets for reloaders, and he was a reloader himself. So he thought, if I'm going to sell bullets for reloading, I just will get into the reloading tool market as well. So we purchased that company in 1971, and it operated as Pacific a division of Hornady. And then in the 80s, we kind of shuffled that deck and it became Hornady Reloading Tools. And the famous colors changed from blue to Hornady Red. Yes, sir. So we've been in the dye market since 1971, making reloading dyes. And the original dyes we built way back in the day were called Duracrome. Great set of dyes. Again, my father still has several of those, still loads with a bunch of them too. Yeah, we supported those dies for a long time, too. I think we're totally out of parts now, so I don't know that we can support them 
uh, anymore, but we did for a long time when I first started yeah. here. And I, and I bring that up to say what a testament to the quality of the tool. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, my father, for example, 308 Winchester, he's got a set of Pacific Duracrome 308 Winchester dies that he bought used in 1980 sure. and still loads 308 Winchesters with them. So, Absolutely. Uh, definitely a testament to the build quality and, uh, we know, obviously our tools now. Uh, we'll talk about the warranty, um, but again, we've been in this for a while. We know what we're doing. We've got a great engineering time, team behind it, and for the the way that I describe to customers kind of that good, better, best scenario, I think it might be easy to walk through the podcast in that manner. We'll start off with our, our good set, which is an amazing value, and we'll talk about some of the features that make it such an amazing value. We'll get into the match grade stuff, and then we'll talk about that full-on custom die uh one what that gets you how that benefits you as the shooter and the loader and two what that process actually looks like so getting started we have our custom grade and just like our ammo you know we've got custom ammo it's called custom it's the the line of ammo and the desire there was to create factory loaded ammunition that was custom loaded tolerances specifications quality like just that next level of what should be expected of factory loaded ammo. And I kind of see that. I'm not sure if that's why we named them the custom grade dies, but they work every single time. They've got all, every cartridge in the world is really supported by these things. Um, Ben, walk us through what the custom grade dies are and, you know, what's, what are some of the design features in the seeding die and the sizing die that make them such a good value? All right. Well, Custom grade, you know, I'm not sure why it was named that. That was probably prior to my tenure. Um, but I can see why it's a, it's a level above, I, I feel. Um, of course, I die, design them, so I'm a little bit partial. Um, you know, your custom grade die set is a standard full-length size die. Okay? It's going to size the case, bump your head space to Sammy specifications, and get the neck ready for the next bullet. Okay. Um, it's as simple as that. We've got some features in there like the zip spindle. Mm-hmm. Um, some dies you have to thread. If you loosen the lock ring or the lock on this one, you can actually push it past the threads or you can thread the spindle. Yeah, um, to so you set can your adjust decap your decap pin. pin. Yeah. Or if you break um, one, which we've all done. Exactly. We feature an elliptical expander, yeah. football shape, that facilitates easier sizing of the neck. Um, it also facilitates necking stuff up. For those guys that use a cartridge case and then neck it up to the next size, mm-hmm. the next caliber. I think that's a good point to make just right there. The elliptical expander is something that, you know, growing up using a variety of brands of dies. And then once I became, you know, loyal to Hornady custom grade dies, that elliptical expander, especially in the years I spent jacking around playing with other cartridges, just like sure. you mentioned, that football shape, the, the mouth just gently rides onto it. And it's a very gradual uniform way to control that neck exactly ar brass you ever picked it up and it's dinged and the neck is dinged in these dies do a great job where a ball style expander may just hit that dented in neck and and dented in further yeah Yeah, where this just facilitates a nice easy size and it's it's on the bottom where it's tapered but also at the top yeah so when you run your case all the way up into the die that neck gets squeezed down slightly smaller than you actually need it to be squeezed down And then as it passes back over the expander, that again is also has a nice gradual lead into it versus a ball style, like you mentioned, that's going to be a little bit more aggressive. And that neck has to be squeezed down smaller for two reasons. Number one, brass has a spring back. Okay. Okay. So if we just took it to exactly what we needed it for bullet, it's probably going to bounce back. And every brass could be manufactured different. It could be at different levels of hardness. So we really have to go further past what we need, and then we have to allow that expander to pull back through so that it bounces back in about that thousandths that we consider Mm -hmm. to set your bullet tension. So that's part of the design of the die. Um, The full-length die also believes, I believe, features a finish, you know, unmatched in the industry. We have a special process we do uh, when we polish those dies uh, to finish them up. our dies feature that split lock ring. Yeah. We don't have a screw on the threads. Yep. Um, so there's there's a, just a lot. There's a ton of innovation that we've poured into that die um, yep. to make it. We make them out of steel. They're then case hardened. 
Um, it's probably 70 Rockwell, you know, the five to 15 thousandths deep. So, uh, they're very hard. I've never seen one worn out. Very, very durable. And I think uh, those two points you mentioned, we should dive into a little deeper because those same feature sets are going to be found in everything else we talk about. So first you, you mentioned internal finish and why that's so important for the listener out there. You can think of the internal portion of the sizing die like the chamber of your rifle because it's essentially a slightly shrunk down version and you want that thing so perfectly smooth Mm -hmm. because if there's scratches and stuff in there that's going to show up in your brass it'll show up on your brass exactly and um it it also can collect junk it can collect brass debris um, and that can cause problems down the road um, when you're trying to size and find that ultimate size for your rifle so yep and then that split lock ring, uh, that's something that, you know, again, growing up using a variety of different brands of dies, something I could speak to for sure. Typically, you had 7, 8, 14 threads. You'd thread it in your press. You'd get it set where you want it. And then you'd set your lock ring mm-hmm. so you could duplicate the position of the die. And then you take a set screw and bury it into the threads on the die. Right. And it always seemed a little weird. Now, generally, those screws are made of brass or something like that. So you're you know, theoretically shouldn't hurt your your uh, threads, but it felt weird to be threading in something against the threads of the die and the split lock ring. It is thread seven eight fourteen threads right on there, and it connects to itself with the set screw, and so it just squeezes around the threads rather yeah. than a set screw running into them. And one of the advantages of that too is it allows you, not necessarily, but it's a better chance that. When I thread that down by hand without having to use a wrench, I'm tight as I can by hand. Mm-hmm. When I go to clamp that lock ring, I'm clamping it on tapered threads. So it is pinching itself Oh yeah, tighter. Yep. So it's actually cinching that up tight to the press. So it, I just like the split style lock yeah. ring. It's great. Now, I'm not responsible for that. That was already thought of before no. I started here, but... It's but, a great feature. Yeah, as a very mechanical, you know, and, and good machinist kind of guy, yeah. you appreciate that Absolutely, design. absolutely. So let's move into the uh, seating die because the sizing die, like you mentioned, one of the best values in the industry, the internal surface finish, inter- uh, replaceable decapping pins, mm-hmm. easy to adjust with the zip spindle, uh, the split lock ring, that's always handy. Yep. Um, and going to work for, if you've got a cartridge and a rifle, those custom grade dies are going to work for you. Especially, exactly. you know, you start getting into semi-automatic stuff yeah. like that where you, we, you have designed these sizing dies to squeeze things down right to SAMI minimum every time and give you a good, reliable Exactly. And I, and I might want to point that out for our listeners. I get some people call for small base. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not sure why that term came about in our industry. Um, if other people were flirting with that SAMI min. Our dies are designed to fit in the Sammy Min chamber. Many times I have called people call for a custom die set, not not this custom grade, but custom actual custom because they want it tighter at the base. And after I lay the die out, I said, I, I tell them, "Have you tried our factory dies?" And many times that's their answer, just the factory die, because we make them to fit in a Sammy Min spec chamber. Yep. Um, now, as far as next, you'll see variances in tolerances, and sometimes it has to do with the age of cartridges and the number of manufacturers of brass out there. You know, I, we have to make a die fit in every rifle's chamber, and we have to, to the SAMI specs, cartridges. But as far as neck, you might have some manufacturers making necks at 12 and some max manufacturers making them at 14. Yeah. Because the tolerance on the SAMI case is pretty big. It's like 8,000. Yep. So where you find the die might not be quite perfect for your gun, but it's perfect for the next gun. It's just that it's all within that tolerance range. But, Got it. But if you haven't tried a Hornady die and you think you need a small base, there's a good possibility the Hornady die is going to work for you. Yeah. I guarantee it. Yeah. Like, like I said, I, I guarantee it. I can't guarantee anything because I don't know your individual rifle, but I do know these things will, well, they will work in Sammy Minspec chambers. We've chambered guns with absolute men reamers spec. that we have, measured and quality checked when we receive them that are absolute min spec and yeah. things just run smooth yep the hornady click adjust bullet seating micrometer 
precisely set bullet seating depth with click adjust in one thousandths of an inch increments and easy to read graduations. It's a quick and easy way to achieve bench rest accuracy and consistency with tactile clicks just like a click adjust scope turret. Easily installed on Hornady custom or match grade seating dies. Take your reloading game to the next level with the Hornady Click Adjust Bullet Seating Micrometer. Um, so let's transition over. You're in the custom grade line, kind of our entry level dive, but the best, level. but kind of the, the best value out there. What features do you get in the seating die? All right. I think our seating die uses a system that aligns the bullet and the case before anything starts the seat. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's in our custom grade. That's in every die set you buy. All right. There's a sleeve down there in the bottom. And your case neck goes into that sleeve so far with your bullet on top of it. The seating stem raises, but nothing starts to seat until you start to raise it all. So it holds everything in alignment. Mm -hmm. Most companies call that their match, their match grade seater. And they, ch you know, there's a higher charge for it, okay? Because they have a, a sleeve that holds everything together. That's in our standard dies. Yep. Okay. It's just the right way to do it. Yeah, it's the right way to do it. You know, there, there are other companies, and I can't say that they don't work because they do. They have for years. But imagine when you put your bullet on top of a rifle case, something like a... a Flat base bullet. Yeah, 6.5 PRC or something. And it's, it's the other die that's cut like a chamber with a stem up top. The minute I have to let go of that bullet past the neck, I don't know what it's doing inside that die. It could fall over against the body and then kind of wobble itself up in there. Yeah, or you could crush the neck, which exactly. I have done with those dies before. Exactly. So we hold that all in alignment. So that's a huge deal on the die itself. Um, the seating stems, we offer the standard seating stems which just have an angle in them. And then for our bullets, we offer stems that are custom profiled to the bullet. Um, so the, the die sets come, I, I guess the seating die... <clears throat> There's different alignment sleeves for different cartridges. They also feature a roll style crimp. I guess you would call it. It's not technically a roll. It's still a taper, but it's a aggressive, aggressive taper. It requires mm -hmm. uh, a, a cantaloupe in your bullet in order to be able to use that seating die to crimp. But if you're like me, I don't crimp unless I have to. I want to move that brass as little as I can so it lasts as long as I can. Absolutely. So that's one of the probably the biggest features in our seating dies. Yeah, um, I'd have to agree. That is a feature that. When you start looking at other brands, I mean, sometimes those are hundred dollars for the individual die that has that collar. Yeah, and it's so smooth when you're loading. When you can set the the bullet on top of the case, get it lined up with the collar. When you let go, the bullet's held loosely by the collar. The case mouth is held yeah. by the collar. It puts those two in alignment, and the stem finds home. And then you have low, low concentricity, very, very run out, very, very little run out. Excuse me. Yeah. And just a smooth seating process. And then if you are wanting to crimp for a revolver or a lever action or something like that, that crimp ring is found in that alignment collar and you can get nice, consistent, easy crimping. Um, for the listener out there, if you have questions on that setup, we've got some YouTube videos on Hornady's YouTube channel on if you just search how to adjust a seating die and then we have separate videos for with or without a crimp. We also have, have how to set up a sizing die. Um, mm -hmm. So check those out if you're wondering the exact process. But all in all, I mean, we've got things from 17 Hornet up into the big, big, big cartridges uh, in the custom grade lineup. We really got everything covered from, yeah, the smallest centerfire rifle and the smallest centerfire pistol up to the big stuff. Exactly. And don't let the, uh, along that caveat, um, don't let the series... If you're looking at our website, listeners and viewers, or if you're looking at our catalog, you see Series 1, Series 2, Series 3. Yeah. That's really nothing more than a, a, a costing schedule, a price, um, whether it may be a three-die set or a four-die set, because it require, such as the 500 Smith, uh, and Smith & Wesson. You can't get enough crimp on that case with our cedar die without crushing it. So we built a separate crimp die that supports that case as it crimps it in. Mm -hmm. um, things like that. So those are nothing more than cost of the dies. They don't, they don't, the series has nothing to do with custom grade, match grade, or custom. Yeah. So, and that's almost more of an internal use thing, but we do still print that uh, on the label there. But yeah, it's almost more of internal use. Exactly. Um, exactly. So 
but what you're looking for as the consumer right across the top label if you're if you're at a store looking at dyes right across the top label right beside the hornady ace it'll tell you custom grade dyes or yep. match grade dyes exactly so that's easy to easy to identify them um custom grade set i've said it before you've mentioned it already i do think again with our heavy you know heavy bias here that they sure. are the best value in reloading die on the yeah. market yeah, they really are we we hold the manufacturing tolerances tight they're made with reamers that are designed by us for specs that we want to see out of our dies um the, the alignment sleeves like i say you know if it's a 30 caliber alignment sleeve we probably got a 310 diameter hole in it so you've only got a thousand per side when that bullet's in there holding it straight um i mean everything everything is designed here and made here um so That's we're able to control thing. everything absolutely yeah absolutely so let's move on from the custom grade which is kind of our our good but good makes it sound not good enough because our custom grade really is a darn good set of dies yes, for sir. the money yes, uh, and most of the time you know depending on what you're loading like the six five creedmoor set they're not very expensive i mean this is like a 50 or 70 dollar set of dies right. and you're getting a lot of value there but stepping up from that we have our match grade dies mm-hmm. and walk us through with the cedar and the sizing die individually the differences between custom grade and match grade and how that benefits the shooter or what shooters might want to uh, pop for the the match grade. All right. So match grade dies, as far as the cedar goes, it's the same great cedar. Okay. Um, same great cedar. We do include some stems for the, like the ELDX and ELD uh, match, match bullets. bullets. Mm-hmm. We include it. They also feature a micrometer on the top of them. Yep. All right. Soon to probably be replaced with the new click micrometer. Likely. That we yeah. made. I haven't heard if we're going to officially do that or not, but so far they're included with the original they're micrometer. Original micrometer, yep. I would like to point out. Which allows you to adjust that in 1,000 increments with the lines. Yep. I would like to point out that this is really convenient, the micrometer, that it, yes, okay, I can see that's one thou, because this is, those are engraved yes. to a true thou. Um, this allows you to see the resolution, but it doesn't actually increase the resolution. It's like, it just allows you to see it, duplicate it, document it way easier on the eye to make those fine adjustments. Yes. Um, but like you mentioned, that floating alignment collar that you, fo- you find in the custom grade, same hardware in the match grade. Exactly. We felt that, that good about that. Um, so as far as the die set's concerned, uh, again, the... The seating die featuring the micrometer, uh, the extra stems. Um, most of the changes, other than the micrometer, happen in the full length size die. Okay. What a match grade die set allows you to do is control your own neck tension. Okay. Mm. In the in a standard custom grade set, we set that neck tension. All right. The match grade fellows that want to use a match grade die set, those are set with a bushing. Sold separately, you purchase a bushing. For the diameter of neck that you want to have out of it, okay. So if I if I want a three hundred neck, I can buy a two ninety nine bushing, and hopefully with spring back coming back out of that die, I've got a neck that's three hundred. Okay. Okay. So it really allows you to to start controlling neck tension for that next level of consistency. Mm-hmm. You know, is this neck tension better? And we have even guys that go with smaller bushings as their necks get harder. Yeah, because they want consistent neck, neck tension. tension. Or if you're outside turning your neck thickness. Exactly. Then you have no choice because some factory custom grade dies or other manufacturer standard dies, they won't size it anymore. If you have to turn your neck, um, you want to true it up, and all of a sudden, from a die that was designed around a thirteen and a half thousandth neck, I've turned it down to eleven and a half or twelve. Now I'm not getting enough bullet tension. Then I have to step up either to the match grade set where I can control that or the custom set, which we'll talk yeah. about later. Not custom grade, but custom. Yep. Um, so that bushing allows you to go in and out of that die set. The die set includes a, it includes both the elliptical expander and what we call a pistol decap pin retainer. The elliptical expander is for the guys that just want to control their neck tension, but they still want to pull that expander back through the neck. Mm-hmm. Um, the decap pin retainer is assembled on the die. Like That's the for when you here. want to control the bullet tension completely from the outside of the neck when you put your bushing in there. Um, don't let the math confuse you. 
what what I'd say if you if you there's a couple of ways loaded round diameter measure my, right around the neck with right the around the seated. neck loaded round and subtract three that's where I would suggest you start if you have a set and don't know okay and then I would go one either side of that with the bushing yep and okay. that's important to note because if you order a, a set of match grade dies you do some simple math and you find your bushing diameter right and you go oh that's the one well your brass that you're using might have a different opinion exactly and you, then you'd be out another week or two waiting on a bushing to waiting come in the Waiting on another bushing, yeah. And we sell bushings for all of our, the calibers that we manufacture in the standard match grade line. Mm -hmm. um, our dies are interchangeable, so you can use Wilson if you need to, or Redding bushings if you happen to have them. Okay. Um, or for when we get into the custom world, we don't make that particular caliber bushing. There are bushings out there available that oh, okay. work, and that's that little fella right there. Yep, that the bushing available in one thousandths of an inch increments. Increments. Yep, nice. They're they're hard. Again, you'll never mm -hmm. wear one of those out just yep. from use. Uh, and you can, like you said, set your neck tension to your desired length. The Hornady Security Fireproof Keypad Safe. With a heavy-duty 16-gauge steel body, extra-thick 8-gauge steel door, and four 1-inch diameter locking lugs, the Fireproof Safe achieves a fire rating of 30 minutes for up to 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Both the interior and adjustable shelf are covered in a protective carpet that offers flexible storage configurations while safeguarding valuables from damage. The Fireproof Keypad Safe from Hornady Security. Do you have a preference? Uh on whether or not you use an expander if you're using a neck bushing you know if i'm going to use a neck bushing i do not use the expander okay um because the purpose of the die for me if i'm going to use a die and you already know my feelings about that particular die um is that i'm going to control it from the outside because i know what my brass is i've either turned my brass or it's very consistent i know what kind of tension i want and I don't really want anything through the neck. But I've also prepped the brass to make sure that there's no donut inside that neck. The inside is just perfect, okay? So that I prefer not to. I have many guys that want more tension, so they really squeeze it down hard. And they may even take their elliptical expander just to kind of kiss it up and true it up. Mm -hmm. I've even recommended that they can take a little sandpaper to it if they want to make it a little smaller. Or I can make them just a custom expander for for smaller sizing um, but I don't feel like I think the spring back is the same maybe if I took it down five and then moved it back four it would bounce two back mm -hmm. and I, that sounded confusing but so there are guys that think along that line um, the die features that cap that you were showing on the top that holds the bushing in yeah this cap here geez Hercules <laughs> um, features this cap so I know some guys will back that out um, to let their bushing float up a little bit more uh, it allows you to do half your neck it's kind of a hidden oh, feature yeah. of that die like if i only want to size half my neck um pros and cons to this die the pros obviously i've mentioned i can control my neck tension completely still has the same great finish the same great sizing ability one of the cons or one of the only cons is the fact that that bushing has to go in, that bushing has to have a radius or your brass wouldn't flow in it. In the die, in order to not scratch the neck, we have to kind of have a chamber diameter in there that that bushing sits on top of. Right. So there is a certain part of the neck shoulder junction of every case that can't be sized because you've got your radius in your bushing plus that little step. So there's a little bit right in the neck shoulder junction that cannot be sized with one of these. You're still being able to bump headspace, but that little bit sometimes can affect how it fits in your rifle. Mm. So gas guns, this is probably not, unless you want a single feed, this is probably not the die for a gas gun. Okay. For sure. Yep. Okay. And when I use this type of die for my hunting rifles, I chamber my rounds before Go I hunt with field. it because I want to make sure they're going to chamber mm -hmm. in case that causes a problem in the chamber. Many times it doesn't if they go right back in the same gun. It's fine, and that's why folks really like these die sets. Yep. But this is our premium, our best die line, and it features all the great things. that the, You'll notice that the seating stem is a little different. Excuse me, not the seating stem. The spindle yep. is a little bit different. It, it has a couple clips, and your height is adjusted with this second level and adjuster here mm -hmm. to be able to adjust your height of your decap. Um, 
but that's not a just the spindle itself necessarily isn't it's on a couple of eclips that hold that spindle in there due to the design of the die got it and i I've, I've definitely used some match grade dies i i certainly uh have enjoyed them but i have gone back to the custom grade for the majority of my stuff uh real quick you'd mentioned that that small radius and that small step for the neck bushing and i want to point out to the listener just to be clear that if you design the die with a zero tolerance fit where it was flat on flat with no radius that you would end up damaging cases likely because that neck wouldn't find home yeah. uh, and if unless it went in perfectly true every time uh, you're trying to put a you know a a circle inside another circle that doesn't fit together so you you do have to have that radius so that it can be squeezed down yes. otherwise you just end up crushing necks likely yes. um, but i have played around with match grade dies uh starting back in like 2014 or 15 i built a custom built seven mag from end to end everything was custom on it and it was an awesome hunting rifle and i was wanting to control headspace via the shoulder even though it had a belt so i took my fire form brass and you'd mentioned about using the elliptical expander or no expander at all what i found uh a practice that i that i liked was i would decap the brass uh, with an expander holding my decap pin in a universal expander and then i would size it with no elliptical expander uh, and the reason that i found that to be most advantageous was if i tried to do it all in one die pulling the expander back through the neck would often pull my headspace back out by one or two thousandths so by using a bushing and no elliptical expander i could push my shoulders back three thou and every single one came out three thousandths of an inch worth of bump exactly i didn't have to compensate for spring back on headspace right because i don't have a ball pulling back through there that could affect it it did yeah and, and it was how hard or soft your yeah, and, and it was inconsistent was the reason i was like the reason i went with that process mm-hmm. was it wasn't two thou every single time sometimes it was none sometimes yeah. it was two um sure. sometimes it was one and so for consistency stake uh sake rather that's what i found most advantageous using a match grade sizing die yeah and we yeah. do have a video out there just search it on the hornady channel on how to select a match grade bushing diameter uh, we walk through about three different ways uh, to obtain those numbers like you mentioned loaded round measure it subtract three that's a great way to start especially if you don't have anywhere else to go uh, but then we went through several other ways one of which included a ball micrometer which is probably the ultimate way to do it uh, yeah we added that to the line because i felt that was an important part of an addition mm-hmm. the ball micrometer excuse me to our reloading tools yes yep and uh, if you're in the custom world you got custom chambers custom neck diameters or if you're outside neck turning a, a good ball mic is definitely something to, to yeah put you'll, on know. Shopping you'll list. know exactly and then if you have to the match grade set is a great option too uh, and not if you have to you may choose to mm-hmm. just like in your instance um, it helps you control that neck tension and put it right where I need to be. Right. So let's jump the hurdle here into custom. And custom can mean a lot of things. One, we have a custom shop where if you need a shell holder or, you know, some sort of specialty tool that we offer, that's that, you know, we have that for those reasons. But largely on the day-to-day basis of running the custom shop, you're doing custom dies. And uh, I think one of the more confusing things that we would get in tech people would call and not be familiar with was we have a custom shop that can make you custom grade dies and they can make you match grade dies. Uh, and so walk us through one, what custom dies are. When you call Hornady, you talk to Ben, you get a custom set of dies. What does that get you and what does that process look like and who does that benefit the most? All right. I'll step back to the reasons why you may want a custom. Um, Number one would be a wildcat. Mm. You can't buy dies off the shelf. Um, Number two may be an obsolete cartridge. There's nothing available, so you have to either make your brass and and make it work out of something, thus forming dies, things like that. And probably the third person is, I have the chamber for a 308. Let's just throw that out there that's larger than most so the the standard die sizes the case too much 
I want to control that size. Mm -hmm. So the, the major difference between custom grade, match grade, and custom is the fact that I'll build the die to your chamber. That is a one-off die. It's not cut with a reamer. I designed the die around your fired cases, chamber reamer drawing. I've had to use chamber casts. We get the information we need by me helping you with your gunsmith or yourself. You may already have it to find the information we need to build you a good set of dies. Okay. I take into, I take into account what are you doing with this? Are you hunting? Are you target shooting? Are we single feeding? Things like that. All of that information gets poured. We design a die. It's single pointed on a CNC machine. Mm. It's hand polished. Okay. Twice. Once after it's done machining, goes to heat treat, comes back, it's hand polished again. Wow. And the sizes are to, to the dimensions either that I determine or customers have spec their dimensions. It's kind of the next level. If a customer has used a match grade die, which the body size is set to a Sammy spec min chamber, mm -hmm. and they found their neck niche, they know they want a 300 bushing in that neck. Okay. So they can call me and say, all right, custom die, but I want the neck 300. So I can build them the full length size die, which is the ultimate in concentricity because it's all cut in one shape. There's no bushing up there that can move around. Right. With a 300 neck in it. So the big difference between custom and custom grade and match grade is the fact that custom can be either one, but I'm going to make the dimensions to what you want or what we determined together mm -hmm. that your rifle needs. That's Minimum awesome. spec makes brass last longer, more accurate, easier to attain your headspace dimension. Good neck tension with a factory die you might see when you from a fired case. And it all depends on chamber design, but you might think, man, I am sizing the heck out of this neck. Well, it's because of that neck thickness. We have to make it smaller so it will hold a bullet. All right. And there's so many manufacturers out there where in the custom world, no, you sent me your brass. I know what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to go four thousandths below loaded round. And then the expander will pull back through. Or you can choose, no, I don't want an expander to go back through. The, the possibilities are endless in the custom world. A lot of guys have different specs, different reasons. We have some folks want tenth tolerances. That's four decimal places. And get them in series. I think I probably said this on another podcast in series of a couple tenths smaller, each one. So that as their brass hardened, they went to the next smaller die. Wow. So we can even do that. Um, that's remarkable. Nor yeah. Normal tolerance for the standard prices that you see online or whatever. Um, those are plus or minus one, kind of like a factory die, but the die is seriously a match to your rifle. It's a blueprint of your rifle. It should go with your rifle. If you're going to sell your rifle or give it to your kids or grandkids. The die set should go with it because it's very possible. It's a matched pair. Yeah, it's very possible. You purchase that pair and you're going to load some for your buddy too, and they won't work in his. Mm -hmm. That's how matched many of those die sets are. That's remarkable. And so, also uh, an important note, we've been talking die sets where you buy a box like this that's got the cedar and the sizing die mm -hmm. in there. In the custom world, if you call Ben and, and you want a custom die, you can get just a custom die if you have yep. I, I bought a set i have a cedar the cedar's great yep. i want a, a the sizing die specifically for this rifle and you can certainly yep. do that you get single dies you can get seating dies i've made expander dies special expanding dies crimp dies. hydraulic form dies mm -hmm. crimp dies um along with all the other custom things shell mm -hmm. holders shell plates i've even made dies for an old star reloading press um they they screw in from the bottom Oh, wow. Yeah, with a smaller thread. So okay. there's all kinds of things that are out there. And pretty much, I don't turn anybody away. Sometimes the price turns folks away. But, it, you know, we can, if it's manufacturable, more than likely we can do it when it comes to reloading equipment and the things that we need to make. Okay. Look at this. A hundred free bullets when I buy these select Hornady reloading tools. Wow, 500 free bullets with certain Hornady reloading presses and kits. Well, what do they have? Let's get loaded. There's no better time to stock your reloading bench. Choose from the most durable, precise, and convenient tools on the market and receive free bullets to get you loaded. Visit Hornady.com for further details. Next time we get loaded, 
I'm buying. So these dies that we've been talking about from 17 Hornet, you know, up to and including, you know, those like 338 Lapua, those are all on kind of a universal standard of 7 8 14 thread pitch. Everything. Do you guys do in the custom shop anything on that next size up, like the inch and a quarter 12, like for 50 BMG, for Absolutely. example? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of uh, stuff happening right now in the ELR world. You got the 375 uh, Hellfire. You've got obviously the Shy Tax. Um, you're getting more and more people playing around in this uber long range space yep. loading ammo on a 50 bmg press on those really big cases yep we can do that as custom as well right now the only we have an inch and a half series die set that's bmg in the standard line but everything else in between there we've done dies on inch inch and a quarter 12 which is standard mm -hmm. um, some folks even do that on a standard o press if you take our press the lock and load bushing out that's an inch and a quarter 12 thread right it allows you to go to a bigger dry some guys want a little bit more size at the base, so we need the hoop strength in the die to handle it and not crack, so we go to a bigger die. Um, some of them just won't fit, as you mentioned, the shy tax, the, the Barretts, they just don't fit in that. So we can do inch and a quarter, and we can do inch and a half, and any other thread you want. Like I said, we've gone smaller for certain threads. Wow. So. And one thing that's been increasingly uh, more important the last hmm, five years or so um, I believe Widden has a custom shop, a great shop and, and, and great performing dies. I'm not sure any of the large manufacturers, if their custom shops are still active. There was times where I think they were and then COVID and now I'm not sure where you can get a true custom set of dies. Uh, I know, like I mentioned, Widden and obviously Hornady, but there might be some small companies out there, but it's getting to be a more niche thing. Yeah, yeah. I know that for a while I was receiving calls from guys who said that the folks at RCBS would tell them to call us. Yeah. Um, and the, the three that I'm aware of is us, Wooden, and CH4D. Um, but we've got a lot of calls. Uh, the back order list is always there. Yeah. Um, we're probably right now about 16 weeks for your lead time, which is probably better than some and worse than others. Yeah. Um, but, but you're getting truly, what you're paying for. Truly custom. I'm not going to... I feel like many of the other manufacturers, once they made a 243 Ackley Improved, they bought a set of reamers, and that's the ones you get. Well, if it's not SAMI or CIP spec, there is no spec, period. Mm -hmm. There can be slight changes, and when we design those custom dies, those changes are taken into consideration in the design of the die. Yep. Do you so know? they're single-pointed. We don't buy reamers. Now, there is another level where we do. And those are called contract die sets. Let me explain that. We didn't mention that on here, but they're called oh, contract. Okay. So yeah, this is a good question. I've had, when I was in tech, I had several companies call me, Hey, I'm a gunsmith in Texas. I've got this cartridge. Um, it's not Sammy approved cause I'm not a Sammy member, yep. but I've not changed my reamer prints and I'm building guns. Exactly. You know, a hundred guns a year. Yep. What and can we do here? So he wants to provide this particular customer wants to provide his, his customers with the complete package and not have to have them go look for dies because obviously it's not a SAMI approved cartridge. There's nobody making cases unless it's a custom case, things like that. So we have a level of die sets that is custom. It's kind of the blend of both. All right. Okay. They call in, it's a minimum of 25 pieces. We will still design the die around their chamber. And because it's tightly specced, it still is tight, but we'll order reamers so that we can bring the duplicate cost them. Bring the cost down and duplicate so that all the die sets are the same. The customer will order 25. Those are called contract die sets. You'll see them online. Some people say, I see you've made it. And when they give me the number, the number ends in a C. Okay. 041732C. Yep. That's a contract die set. It's made exclusively for that person. So most likely if you call for that die set, unless they've released it, I send you to them to buy it. Yep. But it gives them an, an advantage to... Purchase at a lower cost. There's a one-time engineering and tooling fee and then a per-order setup fee of 100 bucks, And that's kind of how it works. And then your cost is based on the series of sets. But um, it's another option. I've even had folks that just like it and had 25 buddies that wanted to do it. So they all pooled in and got, got, a, contract. got a contract set of dies. That's neat. Well, and a good example of this would be um, the 6mm GT is Sammy spec now. But before that, mm -hmm. that was a contract set. The uh, 6.5 Gap 4S 
has never seen Sammy approval, but you can buy Hornady dies at GA Precision's website. That's right, because GA George called me up and we made a contract set for him and he purchased them from us. Yep. Um, another one, probably bigger than those even, some of those contracts turn into standard sets. 22 TCM, you remember when that came out? Yes, I do. I had that company out of Arizona. I don't remember their name. Arms Corps, wasn't it? I think so. And they ordered like 100 sets and then 200 sets and then 500 sets. And eventually it went to Sammy. So that contract set now became in the Hornady line as a standard set. Mm -hmm. So we see that a lot. That was one case that I was thinking of off the top of my head, but the GT is the other one. Yeah, 22 yeah. Creedmoor probably at some level. Absolutely. Um, I do have a question though for our listener that has custom everything, you know, maybe a bench rest shooter or an F-class guy or something like that. Um, do you have a preferred method that you think is probably the best way uh, to get the sizing die dimensions? You know, you'd mentioned you can do it on a chamber casting, fired brass, reamer dimensions, you know, like a solid works drawing of the reamer. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specified method that you think is the best or do you like to use a combination of or for the listener out there that might want the best cost isn't an option, how would you prefer to do it? Well, be, because I'm a nerd, um, my, my probably preferred method, and I feel what is the best method, is your chamber reamer drawing and cases that have been fired to the point where they're sticky. Okay. You know, where you get that little bit of a sticky boat lift or yeah. going in there just the a little click, bit sticky. The classic Yeah, click, the, yeah. the neck you know, you're just excising them and you're firing that point because then I have, here's what my rifle is supposed to be. I can see when I look at that compared to your brass, all right, they hit the headspace dimension. It's right here. Um, yes, these cases are fired to the chamber. And there's even times where I find this drawing is not right. There's no way that this case matches this drawing. And so we'll go back to the Reamer manufacturers and we'll get that corrected. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to help with that. And maybe that's me trying to dig in a little too far. But if I have a picture of what it's supposed to be and a picture of what it can be or what it is, that's a great way for me to design the best set. Got Second it. best option is those fired cases. Yep. Fired cases are, you know, they're paramount. Because if you're doing a standard die set, I can measure that neck thickness with a ball micrometer and I can set the tension in your die. A match grade dies, I've already built match grade dies without any cases, just on the chamber room drawn because... The hole in a match grade die is chamber, chamber size plus a little bit, so it doesn't scratch the neck. Mm -hmm. um, third best is probably when you when you don't have either, and you're going to have to do a serial safe casting. You know, you're going to have to have your help your gunsmith get a casting of the chamber, and we even had to help you work through. All right, this is probably your parent. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try this? Just to try to get to that fired case stage. Um, sometimes a drawing and a casting because the, the tough part about a casting, unless it's a single shot, there's no indication of headspace on a casting unless it's belted. Oh, sure. You so see, you, yep, yep. You don't, I don't know the I don't, true I, length. I don't know where we're at, where that bolt face comes up to the barrel. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, there's lots of ways to do it and just call me. We'll talk through it. Yeah. Um, How do they get a hold of you for the listener out there that wants to go with the custom set? Just give a call to 800 338 and either ask for Ben or 261, that'll come to my extension. Now, give me some time. Sometimes my voicemails get big, and it takes a couple of weeks. But I will promise that I will get back to you. Yeah, that's just so cool that we, we offer that, and we have an employee dedicated to just designing this stuff. And uh, like you mentioned, it is truly custom at an individual basis. It's not, okay, well, we've done, you know, the the whatever that one. Okay. Well, we know that. So we'll just get a reamer. So every time we have to make them, uh, but, uh, these are truly custom at an individual level and yes. that's, that's really cool to me. And then wrapping this whole thing up is whether you buy the $50 set of six, five Creedmoor dies in the custom grade set or the match grade set, or you get a full on individual custom set all covered by our lifetime warranty covering manufacturer, worksmanship, craftsmanship, uh, all of that. So you really have a hard time finding some better dies in the market, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, I've never seen, a set, I, can't, I, I shouldn't lie. I have seen one set of dies wore out. And I might have said this on a previous podcast, but it was a 50 BMG set. Mm -hmm. And the die set wore out at the neck shoulder junction. Well, in visiting with the customer, he was loading ammo as, a, as an annual manufacturer. 
I, he had 50,000 pieces on that die. Wow. But we ended up saying, okay, let's do this. So we built him a carbide shoulder and neck die and with some inserts. And that problem went away. We haven't heard from him since. But that's the only die I've ever seen worn out. Um, you just don't see it. You'll yeah. side, you'll, you know, we'll get them in. We'll polish them for you. You might get a little brass stuck in there or something. But I've never actually seen one worn out of tolerance. That's amazing. Well, yeah. that's great, Ben. Thanks for taking the time to, to walk us through the different dies. I think this is going to help our consumer and help people that maybe don't use our dies currently maybe take a better look at the Hornady die set and, and our options that we have for you and yeah. the incredible value you get uh, with just that custom grade set. I keep going back to it. I mean, for my match shooting, I'm still using the custom grade set. One of our best bench rest shooters that Hornady's ever had, Johnny Potratz. I mean, he's got award after award after award, and he's scaling back on the competition now. His heavy gun, 300 PRC that he's been shooting since he started shooting bench rest. It's loaded with custom grade dies, off yep. the shelf custom grade dies, and he's out there. Uh, like I said, he's scaling off the competition this year. I think he hasn't shot at all in 2023 or 2024, but he would go out there and win matches with ammo loaded with straight up custom grade dies. Yep, yep. Men spec chamber, men spec dies. Um, he makes it happen. He, he makes does. it happen. We pour everything we can into these dies. So awesome. Well, Ben, I appreciate your time and. Again, thanks for, for doing what you, you do because it, it's helping everybody internally, obviously, but in the reloading space as a whole. Yeah, not a problem. I'm glad to be here. And, and, you know, one more thing quick to add. Don't let, you know, we tried to cover custom, custom grade, match grade. If you're still confused, don't hesitate to give our tech guys a holler. They know the difference. They can help explain it to you. Good Just point. call that same 800 number and Number ask for three, tech. we'll bounce you up to tech. Yeah. Yep. And uh, that's a good point because, and I answered that question a lot too. And some people were, oh, I, I'm just trying to get to Ben for a custom, you know, set of dies. And before I would just send them down to Ben, it was, okay, what are you shooting? What are you building? All right. Well, did you know that we, we actually make that, you know, so unless you have some sort of radical chamber, you might want to look at match grade dies or there's a lot of times where it was like, oh gosh, I, no, I didn't know that. Let me find out more. Yeah. Um, Don't be afraid to ask. Right on. Well, again, Appreciate it, Ben. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having me. Guys, this was the deep dive into custom grade versus match grade versus truly custom dies. We've got something out there for everybody, almost any cartridge, any thread pitch, and a full custom shop. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one.